Well, I'm doing the whole one month review thing on the ROG Ally, as well I have a pretty big announcement for the channel going forward. So let's get into it. Starting things off with the design, I do feel as though this is a very good looking modern device. The design is timeless for a handheld in my opinion. It does have some flair such as the RGB and the reflective strips, but it's definitely more understated than over in my opinion. The device is still the lightest PC handheld I own, although I only own this and the Steam Deck, so I don't have much of a comparison point on my own. Although looking online, there are lighter sleeker options to be had, however I think the ROG Ally strikes a nice balance between size and weight. I dare say it is the perfect weight for me. Getting into the comfort of the device, at first I didn't think it was as comfortable hold as the Steam Deck. I still do think the Steam Deck is a more natural hold and seamlessly melts away in your hands, no matter the angle. However, with the ROG Ally's pointed wings, they do have a habit of digging into the palms of your hand, depending on the angle it's held at. I find it to be more pronounced when holding it at almost parallel to your chest when the weight of the console is being pressed downwards with, uh, on the most on your hands. It's nothing experience breaking, just know that I did find myself adjusting for comfort with this device more often than the Steam Deck. Performance for myself has never really been in question. The device is plenty capable, you just have to limit your expectations. Just because the device has a 1080p 120Hz screen does not mean you will be able to max it out all the time. In AAA recent release games, I would play them at 720p around 40 to 60 FPS, depending on your settings in the game, with the frame rate uncapped. However, in older previous gen games, you should be able to hit a lot of games at 1080p doing 40 to 60 FPS. Uh, and the good thing about this is that even older games, you might be able to hit 1080p 120, like early Xbox 360 games potentially. The good thing about the Ally is you can raise your performance ceiling based on your needs. Um, going from 7 watts to 30 watts sustained, having that extra 15 watts over the Steam Deck really does help. Obviously, as well as being on new architecture with RDNA 3, the CPU alone destroys the Steam Decks. This is the first device that I have been able to consider my Switch Pro, as in being able to take this out handheld and play it anywhere, play all my games, whatever. And then when I'm at home, I have the freedom to be plugged in and play all my games how I wish. On top of that, if you were to purchase a dock, you can then dock your ally and play on the big screen. When things like FSR at 4K, it is doable with some games, um, within expectation obviously. However, even playing at 1080p on a 4K screen from 8 feet away, it can look pretty okay at times. Liken it to a, like previous gen consoles essentially for picture softness quality. However, when you're playing on the ally's display, I wanted to give it its own section because I feel it truly deserves it. The colors on the screen will pop off the screen. They are more saturated, they're more punchy. Um, they're not really true to life. They do have the different kind of color setting modes through like cinematic, vivid, normal, FPS, whatever. Um, but I find that sometimes the colors can be a little bit over blown and then they start to kind of bleed in like the, the highlights a bit. Um, but other than that though, I would say the screen is a big step up from the Steam Deck's washed out grayish screen. It's no contest. Uh, the blacks are much, much better. They're not true blacks like OLED, but they are very, very good. Uh, the Steam Deck, if you've had that or seen that, you can obviously tell like the light bleed from the sides of the panel. And yeah, it's, it's just not a good time in the grayscale. Um, the Ally does do much better in that. I, I don't know about the, like sRGB ratings and all that stuff. I don't really honestly care too much about that, even as like editing videos and stuff. I, I don't know. But anyway, um, as well, the display has the benefit of having VRR, which is variable refresh rate. With VRR, we'll go from ver uh, 48 hertz to 120 hertz, matching the image's FPS to the refresh rate. Thus, this is removing judder and smoothing out any moments of FPS drop. You shouldn't notice any performance hit or into your battery or anything like this with this doing it. It would just operate normally as if you're running uncapped. Um, generally, you would want to set like kind of a capped range. So if you set like 45 FPS, and then if you're playing within like 35 to 40 FPS, you'll be in that VRR or low frame rate compensation range. Um, so if you're below 48 hertz, it will go into low frame rate compensation or LFC. 
So that will kick in um, and what will happen is it will display the image and double the output. So it'll display it at double the hertz. For example, if you're playing at 30 FPS, the screen will clock up to 60 hertz. This doesn't mean you will be playing at 60 FPS and be getting that smooth 60 F experience. This will just remove any motion judder and screen tearing mostly. And it should be a much better experience than on a screen without it. Um, again, for anybody that's not really kind of played with this type of screen before, play it on your ally and then plug it into your TV or play a game on your TV because chances are you don't have a VRR TV. And then just notice how the, uh, the frame rate when it fluctuates from like 40 to 60 FPS how it can get like kind of choppy and juddery and it just doesn't feel very smooth to play. With VRR, it will feel smooth in that 48 to 60 hertz range. I'm sure if you've made it this far, you've likely watched dozens of other one month reviews of the Ally, to which I say good. You should never form your own opinion from one point. Some things that annoy me may not annoy you or someone else or something that I stated may not line up with your views or use case. You should always use your biggest ally, which would be your brain. I'm sure a lot of popular YouTubers or other content creators have sung praises about the device, as have I. Just know it's not the infallible device it's, it may seem to be. There are bugs, there are glitches, things sometimes just do not work. Sometimes they work when the same thing you just tried didn't work. It can be maddening. Most of this is due to Windows just not playing nice with the software or the handheld form factor. I have the benefit of being a bit of a Windows wizard. I haven't had too much issues with this device and Windows, mainly because I just know how to navigate it and get it to do what I want it to do. I know not everyone has this ability or knowledge. That's why channels like this exist, to hopefully help users navigate their devices and unleash their potential to the max, both user and device. I am definitely in the mindset of teaching someone to fish. If you explain them why things are the way they are, not just, hey, here, use these settings and then provide no further info, they're more likely to understand when things go wrong as well as why. Even if they cannot remedy it on their own, when it comes to dealing with support, you having a better baseline knowledge will likely help come to a resolution faster. As such, getting into my announcement for the channel, I did go ahead and purchase a second-hand XG Mobile 2022 edition, the AMD 6850MXT. Uh, I did this because I have decided that for the next month I will move from my desktop, which has a 4090-7900X inside, and I will be using the Ally and its XG Mobile as my only means of computing for the next month. Gaming, editing, browsing, everything. I've been operating like this for the past week now with my first official fully Ally made video being the CPU video that I posted out last. Um, with this, I will be able to give better insight into the full Ally Switch lifestyle as I feel that the Ally is one of the more entry level ways into this. Yes, there are other devices from GPD and I and Neo. And while I do wish that the Ally did not use the XG mobile port, it is what we are stuck with, which in turn increases cost of the eGPUs, which is a damn shame because it can truly be an amazing experience. And in my limited testing, I have been able to enjoy some pretty great experiences uh, in dock play, even with the lower end card. Honestly, by the end of this, my choice will either be to switch to or not to switch to the lifestyle of full-time computing on the Ally and selling my desktop. I highly doubt that, but we will see. I'm full ready to sell this back to my local Facebook marketplace, knowing that I will get a decent penny for it as they are rare in Canada. The only one we can really buy from stores are the 4090s and they are 2500 bucks. However, if all goes well, I could realistically sell my desktop for more than that, and on top of the 6850M, I could get the 4090 mobile, basically a 4080 desktop, which is still more than plenty for my needs, and have some change left over to spare. The only unfortunate thing is that, that it only runs at by 4 PCIe connection, not the by 8 it can run at. This is a limitation of the Ally, not the GPU. Will it be no noticeable? Uh, likely not, however it still is potential performance left on the table. The other downside to this obviously is only having 16GB of memory. When using the XG Mobile, you must set it to auto to be able to access all the 16GB as system memory. 
However, in 4K gaming, if you own the 4090 or honestly even the 3080, system memory is becoming just as important and the 16 gigabyte will eventually bottleneck you in these situations. Uh, we've already seen this in games like Diablo and Forza where they have the warnings. Uh, Diablo will even lock you out of using higher textures at certain resolutions. So 16 gigabytes at 4K is paltry. Taking all that into consideration, the case for keeping it and using the XG Mobile as my full-time setup isn't very strong. However, there is still that allure to it. As I mentioned before, with the idea of having a Switch Pro, well, this is the Switch Pro on steroids, at the cost of almost five times uh, Nintendo Switches combined. Um, however, I will stick it out and provide more videos as well as updates along the way for the Steam Deck comparisons, more benchmarks with the eGPU, VR situations for my wife to play Beat Saber, and much, much more. Please feel free to go ahead and drop your requests to, uh, for video ideas and stuff like that in the comment section as always. I will document them into a spreadsheet and I will chip away at them slowly when I have time, prioritizing what I feel is important for the community in general. Um, and then, yeah, before we go, I uh, just wanted to say a massive shout out to the Rico1217, Amoa, and Joey VR for being channel members. Again, I provide nothing else other than what you provide will go directly towards more content. So it is a massive honor to have this many members. Thank you again. Thanks again for everyone for watching, as well as for generating AdSense revenue. Same thing. It all goes back into the channel and then some. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day.